say it that way. Last week we demonstrated that for you. We had a brother walk that way, which was departing from where he was. Then we had him go this way, and he was departing from where he was over here. Come back to the middle. I said, now I want you to go both directions at the same time. And that's impossible. And it's impossible for us to go a direction or be going in a direction or a path in our lives that would be uh, away from what would be pleasing to the Lord and expect to have a good result. It's not going to happen. We're going to find that it isn't very easy to enjoy a consistent, ongoing, thriving, exciting, joyful, abundant-filled life in Christ if we're not going in the direction of where Christ is. It's not going to happen. We can force it. We can try. We can try to create that. It's just not going to be. So we want to look today at a couple things. First being why we need his presence. Why we need his presence. Number one, so that we would not forget God, who was our source. Bottom line. Now, today, it, this is going to be very practical, and you, you're going to have to have your thinking cap really tuned in, because it's in the little things. It's in the wording and the little things that brings this message around to a reality for us. Once again, so we would not forget God. Now, when we leave here today, I don't believe it's anyone's intention to walk out of here and just forget God. What we are saying is, is that in our scheduled day, we have before us when we leave, we just simply move into that activity, celebrating moms, etc., we just move in and flow with the day. And in the course of doing that, we're not intentionally wanting to, but it's easy to transition in our thoughts, transition in our thinking, our ways of doing things, and kind of go back to life as routine, as we normally would. And the big question is, is there deep within our being, deep within our heart and soul, is there that intentionality that we're still aware of that we're consciously still aware of the fact that we are in his presence and I'm not saying that that we just assume well his presence is everywhere pastor that's what you've always said that's what the bible says he's omnipresent so of course we recognize that but do we recognize that that's what I want to challenge today are we consciously always ongoing aware that as we move about in our course of life, are we aware just how much his presence is there known by us intentionally, not assumed by us, but known by us? Paul says something here in Galatians 3.3. 3. He says, are you so foolish after beginning with the Spirit? Are you now trying to finish by human effort? Now, uh, this verse is basically uh, dealing with Paul uh, helping the people who've come to know Jesus not to try to revert back to the Old Testament way of thinking, the do's, the don'ts, the legalism, the law. That's primarily what Paul is addressing here, that Listen, you've come out of the law. You've come out of the do's and don'ts. You've come out of legalism. We now operate in the grace of God. We operate in his grace and mercy. So he, he's saying if you have begun in the spirit by that, you've begun this new life in the spirit through the gospel, then don't try to go back to the old way of handling things to, to be successful in this new venture of walking in, in the spirit. Now, that's the basic meaning of this verse, but let's bring it into an application for today, an application. How would we think that we can begin a new life in Christ in the spirit through the gospel, but yet walk in the ways that we just were saved from? He just saved us from sin. He saved us from perhaps 
addictions. He has saved us from, when I say perhaps, when addictions, sometimes it takes a long time to get out of addictions. When, you, when people come to the Lord, they've been addicted to things for so long, it's not so easy to overcome them. So they have to grow out of them. Some just seem to have an instant deliverance, and some they, they slowly grow out of it, but they're growing. That's the good news. They're growing in the Lord. So do not expect to become full and complete in Christ, having begun in the Spirit, and think that we can, we can just revert back to or go back to uh, the way we were living before we met Christ. We met Christ so that things would be different, so things would change in our lives. And the point we're making, we have to intentionally work on those things he has taken away from us, he has saved us from. We don't want to go back to those ways. We don't want to go back thinking that we can make it on our own human effort and that, well, I can do both, God. No, we can't. No, we can't. We can't live on that fence we talked about last week. Can't do it. It's not how close to the fence or to the world I can be and still know God. It's how far away I can get from the world as I know God. That's the secret. Now, the second thing and the second reason why we want to get in his presence is so that we learn to depend on him. That we learn to depend on him. Now, I don't need to ask the Lord today, is it his will to clean the breakfast dishes up? I don't need to ask God, is that your will, Lord, if I, if I clean the breakfast dishes, if I, if I straighten up the house, is it, is it your will, Lord, that I cut the grass that's this high? I don't have to ask the Lord's will for things like that. But in basic living, in basic lifestyle, I think it's good to pray, Lord, may your will be done today in my life. May your will be done. I, I thought it was so beautiful as I was with Linda and the family yesterday, but even though Stan did pass away last evening at 10, I got an email at 10 something that he passed away. Uh, I was there with the family and spent some time and uh, one of the family members were telling me that one of the doctors at the hospital um, it, 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 Bay Health here was encouraging them to keep trusting the Lord and, and told them that we, we believe in God's will but you make it clear that you know you let God know that you know he can still raise Stan up but we want what God wants and wasn't that beautiful to receive that from a doctor there at the hospital it was so beautiful uh, I, I just so appreciated that the, the, the sound theology there. Did we think, hey, and you know what I told them last night at the hospital? I said, you know something? I've been in services on the platform. We're doing a home going celebration. And I've said, you know what, Lord? I've said this many times over the years. I have, just never told you. I've said, Lord, you can raise that person up from the, from the coffin right now. You can do that. We're gonna do the service because they're there. But I believe you can raise that person from the dead if you want to. Folks, God can do what God wants to, but it is appointed unto man, unto a woman, wants to die. And after that, the judgment. We, we, we believe, as does Linda and her family at the hospital last night. He was still with us when I was there, but they strongly believed that God could reverse this and bring him back to them. But God chose differently, and they are all right with that. It was a beautiful, mature moment for them. We, we are not, listen, if we needed him to deliver us, then we need him to continue. I, I want us to, if we don't get anything out of this message today, let's get this statement. If we needed him to change our lives, to deliver us, to save us, then we need him to continue on. Listen, we were in trouble without him. So why would we continue to need him after we meet him? We still need Jesus. We need God. We need that presence of the Lord ever ongoing in our lives to continue that walk. And by the way, I want to encourage you, we're not going to backslide if we miss a day or so. If it comes Wednesday and you've been reading your Bible every day and praying and you had a day where you got up and you just had to get going with your schedule and you forgot to or didn't take time to pray, read your Bible the way you would like to have, you're not going to have to get saved again. You're, you're not going to backslide. You're not gonna, I used to think that. 
when I was growing up, our church was so strong, I'm walking with God, so strong about the, the personal devotions that I thought I was in trouble with God. I thought I literally was in trouble with God, that I'm in a heap of trouble with God. And I was scared of God. That's what was in my little mind growing up, that I didn't take time to read my because I was always told we got to do that. Well, I learned as I grew older in the Lord and as I matured as a young man, I realized that I was in trouble because I didn't spend as much time today praying like I wanted. Or I'm not in trouble if I didn't read more scripture than I normally would. I'm not in trouble with God. Uh, that's that legalism. That's that old thing. No, because I, I, I go and live in the grace and mercy of God. Now, now, that being said, we will lose out on his joy. We can lose out on his strength. And we can, if we're not careful, develop a bad habit of neglecting those types of things. And we don't want to get to the point where we are neglecting those things. Because eventually, if we neglect too long, uh, there's going to be some trouble around the corner that we may find ourselves going in the wrong direction. We could do that. There, and what I'm saying is, there just cannot be consistent departure from feeding on God's word and being in his presence. There cannot be a consistent departure from that. We can't do that. We got to make sure that we remain as consistent because if we needed him to deliver us, then we need him to continue. I've heard people say things like, well, Jesus is just a Christ. I used to hear that, but I was in high school. My friends would say, ah, you just a, Jesus is just a crutch for you. You got to have Jesus to make it through. I said, you know what? Then I want two crutches. <laughs> That's what I tell them. Give me two crutches then. Because I still need the Lord. I still need the Lord. Not only do I physically need a crutch once in a while, I definitely spiritually still need Jesus. Because if he delivered me because I needed it, then I need him to continue in him. And to continue that walk. So it brings us to the third point of practicing the presence of God. Now, listen. Let's, let's be very clear. I could stand up here for the next hour. In fact, I was having fun with my wife. I said, what would you say are things you would do in practicing the presence of God? Now, my wife, who just got saved yesterday, <laughs> the last thing I should have asked my wife was some things because she kept going on and on and on. I said, boy, if I'm sorry I asked her that question, I'll be here till Jesus comes. She had a plethora of things that we, we can do to be in the presence of God. It was so good. Actually, it was pretty, pretty humbling. It was pretty cool. She just ripped those babies right out of her mouth. She just had, right? It's like she knew I was coming around the corner, and she had a list a mile long. There, and what we're saying is, there's a lot of things that we can do to practice the presence of God. It's far more than just coming to church today. By the way, you were practicing the presence of God to be here today. When you walked in those doors, you were practicing the presence of God. But there's so many other wonderful things you could do. So, and I want to read a couple of verses we read last week and revisit a couple of things we said last week. It says in Exodus 3, So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight when he saw this burning bush. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. I'm going to tell you, one reason why he could, he could say here I am is because he approached. And we'll talk about that. But first of all, God called from within the burning bush. Moses saw it. He was intrigued by it. He approached it, and God called from within the burning bush. And Moses took notice of that fire, that it wasn't going out. I imagine that that's kind of a no-brainer, that if we go home today and we have one bush in our yard that's burning and it won't go out, that would intrigue us. <laughs> Before you call the fire department or get out your water hose, you're going to look at that for a while and see what it does. And it's not burning up, but it's burning. That is intriguing. And, uh, but most likely, if, if we do not pay attention 
to the presence of God, we're not going to see God the way he's working. We're not going to hear from God the way he's speaking. We're not going to see the way God is working through circumstances and through situations of life. And we're not going to hear how God is speaking to us and what he's speaking to us. Because I think there's a couple ways in which God speaks to us. I think he just, he speaks to us through that inner voice. Sometimes it's a thunderous voice. Sometimes it's a still small voice. Sometimes it might be, for some people, might experience an audible voice. But for most, it may not be audible. But you know in the spirit that you've heard the Lord speak. You know the second way? When you read his word. You see, when, when I prayed this morning, earlier, when I was spending some, a, 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 moment, a few moments with the Lord in prayer before coming to church, when I was doing that, I was talking to God. But when I take time to read the word, that's God talking back to me. So I hear God in two ways. I hear God through the reading of the word, and I hear God through that inner voice, be it whatever way, whatever means, but you can hear the voice of God. You just know that you know that God has spoken and that God is speaking to you. So we take notice of that. We take notice of the presence of God. Moses approached the burning bush. Say approached. He approached. You remember I said at the beginning, I want to be very practical. It's the little things. It's the little things. He approached. I can leave here today and just continue to move on. Listen carefully. I can leave her today and continue to move on with the awareness that he's with me. But I also can take, take it for granted and be just to know and assume it, which is all right. It's true. He's with us. But I can also leave her today and intentionally continue to approach him. There have been times when I've been in meetings or sessions and I really needed to hear from the Lord. Now the folks that I'm in the meeting with or the folks that I'm having a session with don't know this. But I'll do out loud what I do under my, in, un, quietly in my spirit or very, very softly spoken. I'll say it out loud for you to hear it. Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Please, please Lord, give me an answer. Please Lord, show me. Please Lord, talk to me here. Show me right now, Lord. I'll do that under my breath while I'm in the middle of a conversation with someone. I've done that. Only the Lord knows how many times over the years I've been calling out on him. What is that? That's approaching him. That's intentional. That's more than just knowing he's with me. That's intentionally approaching him. That's coming to him. And, And by the way, to see the faithfulness of God come through is awesome. It's awesome. What did Moses do? He went his direction. He went toward the burning bush. He changed the direction he was in and or he didn't stand off aloof. He approached, he approached, he approached God in that burning bush. He didn't know that at first. He just saw fire and he approached it. God spoke to him and he listened. God's presence stands out when we get into his presence. God's presence stands out when we get into his presence. Do you know how important that statement is? God's presence stands out. I want to know more than just assume he's there. I want to know from experience that I'm in his presence. I want to experience that. I want to experience that. I love it when we can go down the highway today and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We can sing, we can praise the Lord, and we don't care if they see us now because they'll think we're on the phone. <laughs> I seriously used to, years ago, I used to be concerned when I was praying in the car because I'd be praying along, and when a car would go by, I'd kind of calm it down just a little bit so they wouldn't think they got to call a trooper, that they got a crazy guy on the road here. He's talking to himself, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm talking to God, who gives a rip? But anyways, <laughs> nowadays you can just be doing anything you want in the car and they'll think you're on the phone. <laughs> By the way, I saw a guy going down the highway recently. 
any state troopers in here? I need some help with this one. This is how they were talking on their phone. <laughs> Literally. I said, how? I'm looking at him. He's talking on the phone like the phone's up here. I'm thinking, Lord, how has this man seen the road? <laughs> but he was talking with, with the phone on his forehead. And uh, so nowadays, hey, cut loose, honey. <laughs> cut loose in the car. Sing, shout, praise the Lord. Because they don't matter anymore what they think in the other car. God's presence stands out when you get into his presence. Uh, John Wesley's wife, hon, Susanna. Susanna, how many children? Twelve. She, my wife told me this, that Susanna, John Wesley's wife, had twelve children, and she wore an apron, and they knew that when she, in the course of a day, or one evening, whatever, she would take the apron and she would cover her head. When she covered her head, all 12 kids knew, even John Wesley, don't bother mom. You know what mom was doing? Praying. She was praying. Wasn't that cool? So, uh, wise, I have a little suggestion. I would suggest you go home today and put an apron on right at lunchtime, cover yourself up, sit in the chair, and enjoy while they make dinner. While they do the dishes, keep that apron on your head. <laughs> or take her out, whichever. God's presence stands out when you get into his presence. Folks, God's presence isn't to be assumed. God's presence is to be experienced. We get in his presence when we, it stands out when we get in his presence. Uh, there was a little boy that was visiting another boy, two story. And they were playing hide and seek one day. And the boy's friend went behind a certain chair in the, in the room to hide from his friend. And when his friend saw him there, he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, you can't hide behind that chair. And the little boy said, why? Because he could hide anywhere as he wanted, but not there. He said, because that's where my dad prays every morning. What an example. What an example. You see, we acknowledge his presence when we get in his presence. We acknowledge his presence. You know what happens when you get in the presence of God? You begin to talk to God because you're sensing God. You're feeling God. You're, you're, you're processing with God. You're divulging things to God. You're talking to God. And we, we acknowledge his presence. And, and th th we're gonna know it's God when we're in his presence. And we acknowledge his presence. And God will acknowledge his presence to you. And we listen to his voice in those times. We listen to his voice in those times. Now, now we get to have clarity of, of who he is and what he is and what he's saying and how he's saying it. We learn to listen to his voice when we're in his presence. We need to cultivate a listening ear. And, and listening is more than just hearing the voice of God. It's more than just hearing what he says in the word. But the idea of listening is that we're also doing what we're hearing. We're doing what we're hearing. What we hear, what we listen, we do it, we do it, we do it. So we get up and we go and we do what we've listened from God on. Because he's given us clarity. He's given us direction. He's given us opportunity. And then we sing this beautiful song. We release and the song talked about today. And we submit to him. We submit to him. We submit to him. Now, I want, I want to show us that clearly when we... What's the results of all this, Pastor? And believe me, folks, there's so much more I could share with you of what it is to practice the presence of God. What's it look like? But let me tell you, think of one word. Stop. Stop. Now let me finish what we mean. Stop the busyness and get into the presence of of God. Pastor, is it possible to be in the presence of God while being busy? Yes. But the way to be successful at being in his presence while we're busy is to stop long enough to get in his presence and, and draw from, fill up, and get more and more of his presence in you. Now, listen carefully to this. You make known to me the path of life, Psalms 1611. You don't have this in your notes. You can write this in. Psalm 1611. You make known to me the path of life. Where do we get that? What's the number one place that we can experience him be known in the path of life to go? Where? 
the Bible. You make known to me the path of life. It's right here. In your presence, where am I? I'm in his presence. You make known to me from the word of God as I'm in your presence that there is fullness of joy. Now listen carefully to these words. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. So here's a very simple equation to think about. If I'm not experiencing the joy of the Lord when times are good, when times aren't so good, if I'm not experiencing the joy of the Lord, you may not expect me to say that, because when things aren't going so good, we don't set joy aside. When things aren't going so good, we don't want to set God aside. When things aren't going so good, we don't want to forget God. Even when things aren't going so good, there still can be the joy because we still have his word. And because we're in his presence, we're going to find the fullness the completeness, the togetherness of his joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Listen to this. You make known to me the path of life in your presence. So if you are not filling the joy of the Lord on a consistent basis, then maybe we need to start approaching the presence of the Lord where the joy of the Lord is. That way we're not taken for granted. I say today, Mom, we wish you a happy Mother's Day. And gentlemen, I say that you give your wife two gifts for Mother's Day today. Give her the gift of time. Give her the gift of time. Over the years, I've heard it said through ladies and sharing with them over the years, where they felt bad and felt robbed because they wanted to, and I would hear this, they wanted to do more for the Lord. But with the burden, and I don't mean negative attitude, but with the heavy responsibility, sometimes the word burden is a good word. The burden, the heaviness of responsibility to take care of family, children, the husband, the house, cooking, cleaning, etc., etc. That moms would feel very overwhelmed, very, very heavy hearted with all that to do. That they didn't have... There wasn't that time that they wanted to be with the Lord and they felt robbed. I would meet them and they wanted to do ministries in the church, but they couldn't because of all that to do at home. I said, well, first of all, always remember that is a ministry. For you to be taking care of your children and your husband, and that is a ministry in itself too. So don't, don't feel bad. That's, that's wonderful. But there's nothing like giving your mom a gift of time. The second thing you can give her today is an apron. <laughs> Stop off at Walmart and get her an apron. Make it long enough so that during the course of a busy life, she can throw that thing over her head, sit in a chair, and leave her alone. <laughs> So she can spend some time with the Lord because you'll have a better wife, you'll have a better mother when you do. Amen, ladies? Amen. So what we have to do is we have to learn to stay in the fire. Uh, so I want you to take a look at something. When we moved to Eagle's Nest 20 years ago, there was a, I was cutting grass and there was a tree in the uh, yard. And uh, is it going to come up, folks? There we go. There was a tree in the yard, and it, I, I meant to bring a twig, but I was scared of the rain, so I didn't go out and break one off the tree today. I was going to give you a limb off that tree, but eh, I didn't want to get any more wet. So, but it, just think of a, think of a, a, about this tall, about this thick, growing up. I accidentally broke it when I was cutting grass. 
And it was like a green stick that breaks like this. It didn't snap in two like that. It was like a green stick. It just splints like, I don't know why. I caught that way because when I broke my arm, that's what they call it. It's like a green stick break. Only doctors would know that. And uh, so I said, well, I'll get a shovel and I'll, I'll just get rid of it. Well, I got busy and I forgot to, to take the tree out. I left it alone for a few weeks. So I'm thinking, well, I'm going to have to, really, and this is all a true story, I asked my wife. I was thinking, I'm going to have to get a shovel and take that out. So I went out one day, and little did I know that a new branch was coming out the side at the base. I thought, well, look at that. A little branch coming up beside the broken one. So I left it alone. 20 years later, this is what we have. That picture on the left was taken just a couple weeks ago. Of course, in the fall time, that's what it looks like. Now, I thought, you know what, moms, you may feel broken. You may feel broken. You might be hurting today about some things. And God knows your heart. He knows how you hurt. Please apply this to everyone. He knows how we hurt. He knows where we're broken. But you know, it was interesting. Because I left and forgot to go to that tree, and because I left that in the ground, the nutrients, the soil, the sun, the rain, brought a brand new tree about because it stayed connected to the source. Ladies today, folks today, you might be broken. You might feel hurt. You might feel heavy hearted. But I'm telling you, if you will stay connected to the source of life, to the joy, to the fullness, if you'll stay connected to the presence of the Lord in the spiritual realm, this is what God will do in you. He'll grow you. He'll heal you. He'll mold you. He'll, he'll, he'll fix that hurt. He's here today again to fix it all. You know, you might be on top of the world right now. Thank God, nothing wrong with that. You might feel you're at the lowest level. Stay connected to the presence of God so you'll experience that new growth. But don't be so overconfident that things are going so well that you can't be, be but affected by winds of adversity because we have walked away, departed from, not approached, not concentrate on, not intentionally be in His presence. Stay in His presence. Stop what you're doing. Get in His presence. Throw the apron over the head and spend some time in the presence of the Lord for therein is the fullness of of joy. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we close with this thought. You can leave that picture up. It just says, to, it's in your outline, I believe. To be near God on a regular basis is a constant reminder of His power, His presence, and reminder that we always, 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 always need two crutches. We always need Jesus. There's never a moment we don't need God because he's our Savior. Amen.